Welcome to Ike Comics Draw Process. Today I'm going to ink the first page of the new episode of First Sun and Sword, and I'll, I will probably do some other things too, uh, but I know I'll be inking that because that's the first thing on the agenda, and it's what I'll be starting as soon as I hit pause here. So last week I did layouts for page one through three. I think I penciled this page last week in the video. Um, this week I completed inks on page one here and penciled and inked page two and finished colors and lettering for both. Uh, and both will be uploaded on the site, uh, ikecomics.com. You can, you know, read along just like in the last uh, episode, the last issue of First Sun and Sword, uh, which we just wrapped up. So, um, It's been very interesting trying to start a new process and a new vision for what this can be. I know that it's the same book, you know, there should be some continuity in how it looks and how it feels from the first issue to this one. At the same time, it's a good opportunity to reconsider, to revisit how I can make it look. Um, and that's, it's been interesting. Uh, this first page that I'm inking now, I actually uh, finished the last three panels at the bottom there and started over on those three. I got a scrap sheet of Bristol board and redrew and inked those last three panels and added them to this, this page. Uh, that level of blunder I have never done on this channel. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not something you want to show off to people. Um, but because I'm trying something new and I'm trying to share my process with people, with you on this, this channel, uh, I need to show the blunders too. And, and I am trying to actually position myself to take a little more risk. And that means, that means mistakes and, and redoing certain things. Um, I'm, I'm trying to focus more on, on, I guess, getting it right. And, uh, but having a process that, that's not too challenging, too tedious, uh, that doesn't take too long so that going back and fixing something actually isn't a huge time investment because I'm focusing on, on speed. So efficiency. So, uh, one of the things that, uh, I'm dealing with there is feeling a little awkward, uh, in this new approach. Now, um, I'm sometimes inking right after I pencil, I'm penciling right on top of the layouts. I called it a more tactile approach last time than, than what I had done in the previous, uh, issues. And yeah, it's like, it, it feels tactile. It feels like you're more directly in touch with each, each step of the process is more in touch with the others. You'll see that on the, uh, on the second page that I'll be inking in this video, I was actually inking, uh, each panel as I drew, penciled it rather and brushing and filling in the blacks at the same time too, rather than finishing one step at a time. Uh, so there's a lot more direct contact between the steps and that is so that I get more in direct contact with the finished, uh, product. It's also why I color and letter a page pretty much the same week that I draw it. I want to have immediate feedback. I want to have immediate connection to the finished product. Um, because all of those artificial uh, separations between the creator, the crafter, me, and, and what I'm making, uh, the less feedback I get, the less I can, I can develop and control the outcome. Um, less opportunity there to be creative and, and change. So I'm working on that. Um, trying to even draw differently in the last issue, uh, I don't think I ever allowed a scene where buildings got as small as they do in this panel you see here. The panels are, I mean, the uh, 
the cityscape is getting down, down to very tiny marks, little bitty lines that indicate um, a little bit of a structure of a building or something. Um, and, you know, that's... For me, that's challenging because it's it's affecting my style. I mean, I've I've said it before, but if you know if your figures are highly detailed and then the backgrounds are not, there's some inconsistency there. And so, um, if I want really loose or not super rigid and and geometric shapes. Uh, if I want to scribble in background pieces that are very tiny or very far away, then then how I ink things that are up close and in, in greater detail adjust, needs to adjust to, to fit with that. Um, so I'm, I'm working that out. Uh, for now, I'm trying to stick with the flat uh, kind of deadline of just one one line thickness um but i'm throwing in the blocks of shadow in a little more organic or loose loose structured shapes it's not just strictly rectangles of black let's say in in that cityscape and the, and the scape is not it's not rigidly um geometric or laid out so moving towards a a looseness and uh uh, efficiency, a fluidity, um, and a more authentic drawing. So I think about, again, with this connectedness between each phase, I would like my penciling to look more like my inking in a way that it wouldn't. Um, now the pencils are in a way, they are just there to inform my inks, just to help me ink the final line but something really continuous between the two. If the pencils are further refined and, and, and shown in, in ways that the inks don't, don't show, then what's the point of doing that extra work in the pencils? That's arbitrarily separate, those phases and those steps. Uh, I'm really trying to focus on making books. I'm trying to make, not just draw comics, but make books that people read. And uh, the goal is the finished uh, book, the finished pages that you read. Um, one of the things I've noticed is word balloon placement becoming something I pay more attention to because uh, it used to be I would draw an entire comic and then go in and put in the word balloons and I had an idea from the layouts where they should go, but there was some separation between trying to make a page that flows and then where the word balloons go. And uh, now I'm drawing the balloons on the page, uh, and I'm, I'm really thinking about those, those positions. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really trying to embrace a little more flexibility in, in the layouts. Um, focus more on on word balloon placement and and where the eye goes from let's say important element usually like a face to the next word balloon to the next face or important element uh, rather than thinking thinking of it like to this panel to this panel to this like that that the eye is going to look at the box by box by box um i hope that makes sense but uh, I think it would be wise that much of the time, and it's not always the case, but often the, the reader's not looking at the panel border. They're not looking at the box. The, um, if, if the, if what they're seeing is the box and then moving to the next box, that seems cumbersome for the reader. And it seems not related to, to, uh, engaging with the story. Um, it's not like in written word where 
from a distance you see no meaning to the words and then you it, you know no word stands out more than another nothing's italic nothing's bold uh, and there's paragraphs so like if i look at a, at a page from a novel i see paragraph 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 and it gives me kind of a visual breakdown but um you know but you're, that that's totally different because you're just looking you're just reading the words the words don't have a different value but with drawings they do when you have a face on a page the human eye the human mind is going to be drawn to those faces a lot more than other things they're going to be drawn to higher energy locations or higher contrast locations certain shapes like x's and especially like face like shapes um which is you know yeah not at all like in written word so um i'm keeping that in mind and i'm really trying to think about the the reader experience more this first page uh i wasn't sure if there was going to be any uh captions or like um dialogue word balloons i chose not to show any of that um my first inclination was to have the magistrate, the, the leader here at the center table here, saying something or having the men there saying something like, hey, magistrate, you know, I'm, I want to tell you something and then go into the next scene where they tell them something. Uh, but I realized that that sort of little, uh, that that's like a separate sort of a message to, to what the visual is trying to show. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to not let um, the storytelling of the words that are, you know, the storytelling in the word balloons um, clash in any way with the visual. So the visual is such a, a big, strong image of, of a palace that if you heard someone speaking immediately within that image um it starts to lose the effectiveness of the image it's not here's a big palace you know it's um a little person on a in the panel that goes hey magistrate uh it, it the story of that little voice in the room and uh and it just it skips it skips over what the image could be, this sort of mood setting, uh, background music, mood setting stuff. Um, I want to allow for that. These panels at the bottom here, these are the ones that I redraw. I'll go ahead and comment on that now. Um, there was nothing really wrong with the panels, um, but they did not capture the basic shape language of the story that, that, I, that I wanted to, to tell with these three panels. Um, it, it was, it's, it's, it's very similar to what I redrew and, um, those minute details matter to me though. So it was worth redrawing. So, um, the, the story here is the servant woman is hunching down to dump hot rocks onto the bed of rocks and coals that warm uh, the, the lizard man and then walk away. So she's lowering down and then the rocks are poured out of the bowl and then she walks away. Now, the real basic uh, thing to convey is, um, you know, the, the bowl being tipped, which is like this, this half, half of a circle or so, uh, a nice circle shape of the bowl being tipped and then some shapes of rocks falling out. That's a very important image if we really got basic. And that's something I'm really trying to do is get really basic. Um, that's, this is kind of a tangent, uh, but going, uh, getting really basic uh, and clear and concise in your communication and in your drawing means getting smoother, getting faster. And you have to pay attention. You have to go slower at first, but it builds to getting faster. Um, so, yeah, and partly the, the way I posed her and the background 
resulted in that first panel especially an extra uh, line work and shadow work that really like it's okay but it's just not as basic as I'm trying to get it, it it's ex extemporaneous detail and again that really important image of the bowl being tipped and the rocks falling out it is to the right of the panel it is kind of low on the panel and the rocks are kind of low and that panel has a lot of what you see there is the the large st rock that that Kurok is sitting on and then in a bit of his back and arm and there's so much of him in the shot that it's confusing the story a bowl gets tipped and rocks fall out that's how i would write it if it was like in written word i wouldn't say Kurok is sitting on the rock and you see just a little bit of his back and his shoulder and and you see this kind of massive hulk of that in, the, in this large rock he's on. And then there happens to be a bit of a... There's the hot stones underneath and then a bit of the bowl and, and some rocks falling out. That's, that, that's, that's getting... Uh, that's distracting from the core message. So uh, I've established the, those extemporaneous details. They're established in prior panels. Uh, that panel's purpose is very concise for one purpose and so I get to draw it I need to draw it in the most uh, intentful you know simple way um, and I'm trying to do that with each panel we have uh, the very first panel there the palace over over the city over the bay um, and then the interior of the palace established boom woman leaning over to dump these rocks boom very basic um now w one of the reasons i think to do that is uh that simplicity is sort of a beauty in itself and it's also something that people can project onto kind of like ink blot test or something uh kind of like uh really simple um like an animated film um even really simple animations where I don't know if you've seen these, but they try to show how humans make story of everything. And you could just see like a, a little ball bouncing and rolling around and, and just a few things happen, but you get the feeling of what the story is of this lonely ball that can't find a friend or whatever it is. We're projecting onto it a story. And, and with simple animations, you can, you can project like, emotion and things onto these characters um to me it's it, if it's too detailed um it actually can get more it takes longer to read the image and i'm less likely to to pay close attention and to invent to imagine a world and more likely to just look at the world i'm, I'm shown um i like I like to be active as a reader. I like my readers to be active, that they're involved in imagining the world like you would when you read a novel, um, to a degree. I think even the best films do this. They allow the viewer to do some of the work, uh, some of the imagining. So um, simple doesn't mean uh, boring. You'll see here it's very, very similar on the first two panels. Um, but the backgrounds are a little bit more flat and simple. And some of the lines are, are just more simple so that there, there's more clear a distinction between the elements, the important elements of these panels. And uh, yeah, getting these shapes just, just right. It even comes down to the the level of of the pose of the characters, the figures. Um, I could pose them in very realistic ways, but that isn't always the most simple, clear way. And sometimes, drawing things a little cartoony, having poses a little exaggerated, it's not just that it's more dynamic and more interesting. It uh, it's more uh, archetypal. It's more uh, iconic and simple in a way and it allows people to project onto it that's that's my my thoughts on it how i think about that but uh 
It's worth saying, I think. I hope, I hope it can help you to think of these ideas. Let's see. You'll notice I pull the pencil out sometimes and refine the backgrounds. Uh, again, that this new process I'm trying to do really, uh, being okay with going back and forth and just kind of building it as I go. Um, here, the, the bowl and the rocks are on the left side now. Her arm goes all the way to the top of the panel, so there's no escaping this most important first part of that panel. Um, and trying to, where I place shadows and other shapes of the rock behind her, or in, well, in front of her, um, I make sure that it does not interfere at all with the shape of the rocks, the coals that are falling out of her bowl. So again, on, on clarity. Okay. I feel like I'm forgetting something I had a note about. Let me see. Yeah, so I guess I've talked about the yeah the kind of tactile process, the more connected process, um, being more mindful. That was another point, another note I made, um, which I've I've talked about these things I, I'm considering and thinking about and um, being being thoughtful through that whole process. You'll see here um, as I am inking. I'm making some minor changes. At first, I was just going to put some of the bowl in shadow, but leave some uh, highlights on it to indicate the, the roundness of it, the texture. But uh, that that's unnecessary a lot of the time. That just actually, as you can see there, that, that white spot in the bowl is actually just breaking up the clear circle image of the bowl. So I end up doing away with it entirely. So I just, I'm taking a little time to look at what I'm drawing and making changes as I go, um, for with, you know, in mind, the main goal, the basic straightforward, uh, simple shapes of things. Whenever I have a foreground element, it happened with the rock. It happened with her arm. Uh, that's oh, and that's clearly supposed to be separate from the, the the background or the the main part of the image. I try to put it in shadow with the inks, so it can be done with color. I try to do it in the inks, so you'll notice how much shadow I put on things when they're really close to the camera if they're like a foreground element, and that is you know not only because things are darker and have more contrast when they're closer to your eye, literally speaking but to help separate foreground and background. Uh, there are some artists who, comic artists, who will um, use a heavier line weight uh, to separate foreground and background. Um, and of course it can be done with color, like cool colors in, uh, in the foreground element or, or very dark colors and then uh, lighter and, and maybe warmer on the, on the background. And uh, again, I'm trying to do it with the inks and let the colors be a little, a little, um, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put it, uh, extra onto the inks. It's not that, uh, yeah, they work together, but it's like, it's like toppings on, on, on the Sunday you, you need the, they're not exactly equivalent to the, you know, the ice cream in the bowl. It's just things you put on top, but together they work together still. It's not like one's more important than the other, let's say. So, um, yeah, some kind of, you know, play between color and inks that works for me. This is mostly about drawing, but the color was interesting. I'm gonna, I need to make a video about how I made decisions on the, on the colors this time, because I wanted to change it from last time. This panel here. You'll notice I redrew from the layout. The layout was going to be like a close-up on the figures. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm erasing and redrawing it several times. There was nothing wrong with each version. It's just, I realized, reflecting on what I'm doing, it was not quite the simplest and clearest thing I wanted to say with the image. It's not about making sure it's, you know, looks, maybe, maybe even looks the best isn't the right word. It's not about making it look good exactly. It's making it say what I want it to say. Um, so I wanted to get just the right, the right pose and angle on the two figures that are kneeling so that one is substantially like larger than the other, um, in the shot and they're, they're very centered in the shot. There's no dialogue in that panel, so uh, they can they can just be centered. I'm inventing this uh, on the page. I didn't have like a, a look to these guys. They 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 sort of show up again, but not not exactly in the story. It's not super important. Uh, obviously. If you design your world more thoroughly, it can feel more lived in. It can feel more more real. Um, but I also want to get good at drawing from imagination and letting it be how I make things look, how I um, fill in the world. Uh, so there's... I, I, it's it's both. I'm not going to go all in on spending a whole lot of time designing the world. I will spend some time on it. But I'm going to leave some of it open for play. And for me, it seems to be leave, a subs leave as much open to play, like uh, open that I haven't determined the design for, as I can stand. That's basically my, my guide leave as much undetermined as I can stand. I didn't know how this lizard looked until I drew him in the first panel the size of like a penny. And now I had to draw him larger and I'm looking at the shapes I threw in the penny size and I'm like, yeah, okay. And I'm getting a feel for who this guy is. And a uh, very hulking, massive shape, but with a kind of tiny head. And I knew that I just wanted him to be kind of Komodo dragon-like. Um, but you could say raptor like, like a velociraptor even, but um, it's gonna be more square on the tip, flat and square. But uh, yeah, it's not like I, I drew him and designed him ahead of time. I'm making that up on the page too. So as much as I can stand, and uh, I understand that people are gonna read my comic and they're gonna, they're gonna, some people might notice that there isn't as much design work going into this book as they may be used to, as they may see in other comics. Um, I've chosen, I'm just letting go. And the, I'm letting go of comparing myself to other creators. Like, this is how I make comics. I'm trying to develop my way of doing it, my practice, uh, the kind of story, uh, the experience I want a reader to have. And I want to speak authentically. And for me, uh, if I were to do a lot more design work, uh, that may not be uh, me speaking. It may not be as authentic. It may not be the same reader experience. So uh, I'm, I, I can't just compare to what other people do and say more design work would make this more professional. It's not about being more professional. Uh, there's no one to compare myself to but myself. Uh, and that's been really liberating, and I'll have to talk more about that sometime. Um, how how my, my thoughts have shifted, you know, part of it's getting older, getting uh, further, more years in as a comic creator. Um, and, and other influences in my life that maybe have, have guided me down a path that's uh, much more uh, uh, individualistic or less like not comparing myself to others and, and just uh, developing my, my own inner voice and, and practice. So Yeah. Yeah, what can 
can I say here? Um, I don't know. I know that drawing comics is, uh, it's, it's a huge opera. It's, it's, you know, it's a playground. It's an opportunity to express yourself, to connect with others, to, uh, it's an art, you know, it's a creative thing you can do. And I just don't think we should worry too much about, um, if it's marketable, if it's how it compares to other people's creations and so on. Um, I, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like saying we almost have too many good comics and not enough great comics that a good comic is not the same thing, right? Uh, the, a good comic, uh, it, it, it meets the standards. It, it follows the model of what you would expect to see. Um, uh, you know, you, this, would, this could happen with anything, like a restaurant. Like, it's what you expect a burger to be like. And it's very standard. And But that doesn't make it a bad burger. It's fine. Uh, it's good, even. But um, we, have, we have enough of that. And uh, I think we're, we're, we're in a time where... Um, there's more reason than ever to uh, to make something more with more love, something more unique, something that could be great, to take the chance, to take the risk of doing so. Because people might not like, like your weird burger. Um, and it's those weird things that people create, uh, ideas they come up with that are uh, weirder and the art and things that look weirder. It's those things that push the medium forward that make the most, Im that can make an impact on the culture that can change what good means for the better. And for me, um, I want to make, I want to go down a path that that's, that that's more expressive and risky in that way and not just good not just decent. Um, that's a personal decision. I don't need income from comics uh, to survive. And so uh, I don't have to meet the standard of what is what people are, are looking for, which is a great, great liberty that I have. Um, so... Uh, how does one make something great? Well, you know, you can't really know if what you can bring forth is great or not. But uh, I can practice speaking more honestly, um, expressing from uh, an inner world, a, a deeper kind of connect connectedness to my work instead of like, um, instead of looking up, hey, what's a panel, what, what panel shapes could I use to tell the story? I'll just use those, for example. Um, but going the harder, longer, slower road of finding that for yourself, what works for you. And if you go down that path and you, and you, um, you can do it with love, if I could just throw that in kind of, without explaining it, then um, that's your best shot at making something great. And it'll at least be uh, honest and unique. And, uh, and that's, that's like, that's the kind of stuff I love, whether any, any type of media or food or whatever, I just, I just love the things that are made with love that are unique. Um, weird comics, that's my, my favorite thing. And maybe that's, you know, just me getting older. Uh, it's 
Yeah. So yeah, there's a, there's uh, there's plenty of opportunity to uh, go that go your own own path, and uh, and that's what I'm doing here, and that's why I'm sharing it. Um. Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing something weird here. So uh, maybe maybe someone else will get encouraged to do something weird for themselves too. If uh, if you make a comic, feel free to share it with me. I will probably take the time to check it out and uh, and talk to you about it. Um, cause I know some, sometimes I get a comment of someone's like, I'm making a comic too. And I'm like, yeah, that'd be really cool to see. Um, showing your process though, in, in making comics that, uh, that is kind of scary to like what I'm doing. Just po just posting and sharing it, uh, openly, like it is kind of, kind of, uh, intimidating and it can kind of get you in your head. Like I, I was getting to that point when I'm printing my latest comic, uh, trying to work out different printing options and, and pricing and stuff like that. And, and the website and stuff that I'm trying to update accordingly. And, uh, it's really easy to start just thinking in the weeds, thinking, uh, capital capitalism thinking very uh without spirit without knowing who you are you're just kind of asking uh without a you know without a core um and so yeah you get in your head you kind of get confused and then if i just take a deep breath and take a step back and then i'm like oh now i've got a little more clarity just just a moment of, of breath or a day <laughs> of kind of recentering and it's like, ah, okay. I, I, I delved into the printing problem, let's say, and I learned some things and then I started to lose, lose myself and I backed up a bit and now I've got clarity. I know I can do it my way. I don't have to, I don't even have to worry about, uh, some of those questions of how to market and print and so on. Um, but it's not easy. I mean, like, it has me thinking how, um, even, I mean, even if you aren't trying to market, aren't trying to be your own, you know, business as a creator, if you're just trying to make the book, even then, if it's something you're going to share with other people, if they're going to read it, um, then, uh, it's, it starts to get, uh, very personal, like how you, the, I, it's hard to say, but like ideas around being honest, um, authentic, uh, these get brought up in your, in your work and um, ideas of, of being selfish or being, uh, misleading. Um, like how often do, do artists like correct and cover up their, their flaws, their, their fingerprints that are on their work. And is that coming from hiding and mi being misleading? And, uh, so like personal self-improvement to me is very linked to the, to who you are as an artist. Uh, it, it seems obvious to me when I look at artists, uh, how much it is, uh, related. And, um, someone could obviously develop technical skill and not, uh, and maybe not do some personal growth as well, but, uh, they, they do seem very linked to me. And, um, and that's, that's really cool. I, I'm glad that, uh, being an artist is, is such a personal growth experience. Uh, it makes life, uh, meaningful. It makes being an artist meaningful. Um, and it's not just that 
I have to balance my relationships and other things in my life that matter to me with art um, and make sure that, uh, that I'm not being selfish with my art. But it's even in the art itself that, um, that you, there, you have to not be selfish. Like, uh, am I making the book for myself or is it for an audience, right? Is it for the reader? Is this something to communicate to others? And am I communicating from the heart or, you know, not? Um, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm for communicating from the heart. Here's the interesting colors I chose, okay? I'm trying to be a little true to the first issue which is monochromatic yellows, and then it switches to kind of a green, a greenish yellow. Uh, I wanted to stay a little true to that, but expand that some. So we have a lot of golds, greenish yellow, uh, really yellow, um, in this palette. Um, but then I've got some oranges that are almost red, and then I have some kind of teal, greenish blues. Just a little bit of each of those. And um, so I played with that a bit to, to come up with this, and it still feels flat. It still feels kind of, uh, kind of lim very limited and almost like the last issue, as close as I can get to it and still expand a little bit like I want to. Um, this is not strictly the only colors I'm going to use for the rest of the uh, issue, but this is, is the constraints that I'm working in, the guide of of where the colors are going to fall and, and kind of how strong they may, they may be saturated. And here's page two. You're welcome to read it here, but you can read it on the website. Ike comics, um, and on clever Kaiju where we're still building a lot of things with, with uh, that community. But the webcomic is there, um, and I hope to do some fun stuff there with others. A lot more than I do here. This is more like my thing. But I want to I wanna do some things with other creators that are, uh, like even just, you know, talking on, on YouTube and, and sharing uh, our work. So uh, looking forward to that. That's it for this week. Got two pages in this week. I don't know that I can do it next week. It might only be one page next week. But we'll see. Uh, be the practice of your art. I'll be doing the same over here. I'll see you next week.